That's when I became very depressed and suicidal. That the car was coming, I was like, let me just go on the street. And I did not like church at all. I thought it was so boring. And I was like 16 then, and he was about 30. Yeah. What? So freaking sleazy. Choking, 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 choking. My royal babes, my testimony on how I got saved. When I was about five, I wanted to see if God was there. I was like, God, if you are there, give me a candy. And nothing came. I was like, oh. It's not true. I was raised up in Christ with my mom. My mom and dad divorced when I was about seven. And it was a very hard time for us. Like, it was not easy. So I could speak in tongues when I was about seven. I thought it was gibberish. But then it didn't feel like gibberish. And around 10, I lost it. I was not able to speak in it again. Because that's when, like, I was really wishy-washy. And my first true encounter with God happened when I was in class four in Ghana. Class four, you are either nine or ten. So I'll never forget this. I, I cannot forget it. Like in Ghana, right, when you don't do your homework or when you do something bad, the teachers would beat you up. They'll cane you with a cane. Yes, a cane. If you want to know more about how to find a relationship with God, I'll put it on the screen. And if you want to know more about true love, I have a free ebook just for you. So all you have to do is just sign up to the newsletter and become officially a royal babe. And you get your free ebook subscribe and i was always a good student so i don't know how come that it was friday that they gave us the homework i don't know if because there was so much going on in my life because it's so much like we literally just in ghana we changed homes around 12 times we lived in 12 different places that's crazy to even at least over 10 different places just in ghana like every few months we were moving and yes it was very hard so i don't know if that was one of the reasons why i didn't do it anyway we came back and then I realized that I didn't do my homework. And then the teacher, the first teacher was the science teacher. He called us out. And that teacher was wicked. He called us out. So he would say your name, the names of the people who have done the homeworks. Do it, you'll be left standing. And I was left standing. He was like, why didn't we do it? And he made us sit down. I was like, he didn't cane us. It's like, it's fine, sit down. I was like, what? And then he saw me, it's like, Angel, why didn't you do your homework? I was like, I forgot or something like that. He made us sit down. Second teacher. I was like, Lord. Before that, I asked, I told God, oh God, please don't let them kill me. If they don't kill me, I'll know that you are you are God and you are true and you are alive. <laughs> okay, teacher. This was a tree teacher. Um, Ghanaian language. He called us out the same way. And then he saw me again. He was like, Angel. Because nobody would dare not do his homework. Me and one guy. And he, he, also, he was the one. And he met us and I was like, oh my God, thank you. Because I thought it was just two. I thought it was just too old. like thank you and then we got to the end of the day i think it was the last subject and then english and then the english teacher came he was like homework so i was like homework i thought it was too that i didn't do there was a, a third one what <laughs> oh my gosh there was a third one i was like lord there's no way that god would prevent me from being punished i was like whatever god has done well two two teachers so it's fine and then the english teacher was like homeworks I will not call anybody out. Just say the truth. If you did it or not. If you didn't do it, stand up. I was like, oh my goodness, this will be a way that I can get away easily. And it's embarrassing to stand up because it's like, oh, Angel, what are you doing? Like, you see, I, I was like, oh. And I was I was kind of standing, sitting, laughing, laughing. And my teacher was like, Angel, are you in heaven or hell? I was about nine or ten and I still remember. I was like, um, hell. And then I moved to the side. In here, say, so hey, you, you guys, okay, sit down. I got off like, what? Three, three teachers. And in the whole day, we had about maybe five or four teachers. So, three out of like five didn't kick me. <laughs> that was a miracle. Guys, unless you lived in Ghana or in an African country, you will not understand what I'm saying. But that was a miracle. All the people who went to school with me could attest to it. If, if you did, please put it down in the comments below. That is a miracle. So I was like, oh my God, God, you're good. I went home and I was kneeling. I was crying. I was like, wow, thank you, Lord. And then after that, I don't know if you guys heard of Angelica Zambrano. It was very popular. She went to heaven and hell and she was about 16. So her testimony was very popular and I was crying. That day was like a repentance day. Everybody in my class read it and they were crying. Even the most one of all people were like, oh my God, forgive me, forgive me. And I was being so dramatic. I was kneeling. I was like, God, like things like that. So everybody else too was doing the same. So those are moments, moments of me getting to know God better, getting closer to him. But my personal relationship with him, like actually speaking to him, like I would speak to him regularly, but not 
like daily kind of thing like he's a friend and that's when i learned that god listens to even pesky requests like you will think god has better things to do with his time but he was listening to me not to be king yeah that's when i knew i did not like church i did not like all night we went to so many different churches because my mom was like oh this church is not good and we're always looking for a miracle we had a court case so my mom basically took my dad to court and it was a whole 10 year court case um, regarding the house that they had built that my dad made us leave yeah it was it was a long one so my mom kept looking for miracles in different churches so we kept moving from church to church and i did not like church at all i thought it was so boring and in ghana oh my gosh it's from seven to like one o'clock <laughs> so i found it so boring i kept always sleeping in church and we went to a lot of all nights so all nights was usually like eight eight p.m till four eight of them i was a bible reader but i read it like a storybook because that time there was no internet and there was nothing better to do in Ghana. So, and I did not have much books. I like reading books, but I didn't have much books. So I used the Bible as a book. And there was a Bible quiz in a region. I won it in the whole region. It was crazy. Yeah, so I was very good in things that had to do with the Bible. But my personal relationship with God was not that there. When I turned about 14, that's when I became very depressed and suicidal. I was broken because I was bullied a lot in school. Because um, I'll put a link of the, another video where I was so skinny like there are some people who say oh you're so skinny man i'm like do you know how i was <laughs> i was so skinny so i was bullied a lot by the guys and even girls and even when your family does it it's even worse like skinny legs and uh, oh, or oh, why are you not eating actually since my mom was having a hard time putting food on the table so when they're like why are you not eating your mom is eating your all, all your food oh it just hurts me so much and yeah if i reject any guy he'll use it as a way to take revenge against me <laughs> so yeah i hated guys a lot and my whole father thing made me hate guys and men way way more it was a very tough time though there were so many times that i just wanted to go on the street like oh my gosh i remember so well that the car was coming i was like let me just go on the street and that's the devil if you hear that kind of voice saying put yourself on the street that's the devil speak against it that i come against you in jesus name yeah i was very depressed and i hated going to school it was a very tough time there were some girls that were jealous of me. I remember one time, so we had a book, uh, a picture. If I find it, I'll show you that everybody took a picture. And then I did. And then one girl sent her picture home. And the mother chose who was the prettiest. And the mother chose me. And the girls were like, oh no, she's so skinny and she's so ugly. Like blah, blah, blah. But the mother was like, oh no, but I think she's the prettiest. And was, they, they came back to school and they said all that in front of me. Like, like it's supposed to be okay for me. And I was laughing. I was like, because <laughs> they were like the popular girls. So I was kind of laughing, but then deep down I was so hurt. Yeah, and then there was one guy, that guy basically fancied me. <laughs> but I guess, because I didn't like him back or ever, he wrote in the yearbook degrading things about me. I spoke about it in another video, in the video about my skinniness. Degrading things about me. And then the next day he was like, yeah. what is the song? I'll always love you. He kept singing, I'll always love you to me. <laughs> He's so embarrassing. So that guy, right, his girlfriend was... Or girlfriend i don't know what they were doing but they were basically like a thing so she saw that that guy was interested in me so she was the same person that the mother said i was the prettiest so i don't know if she was sitting against me for some reason or whatever and that guy that was doing that he was he was one of the most popular guys if not the most popular because he was very he was a bad boy he was all the bad things like, like sexual stuff yeah <sighs> it's crazy i've forgiven them now mm. it's crazy how much where god has brought me now so yeah i forgive all of them now i finished my junior high school in Ghana so my mom wanted to bring me here to complete secondary school and my father didn't want me to come because I guess he, he felt like if we come then we, he will not see us anymore so he had to sign my document so that I come because I was born in Holland me and my sister but my, my, my sister didn't need it from her side so he didn't want to sign it we went to all nights we were banging on the door for him to open up and sign I called him so many times he was like no so hard and so my mom and my sister had to come and make some documents so that he doesn't have to sign for me yeah it was a tough time for me so they came here and then they left me and also my stepdad and yeah it was hard and before that my mom enrolled me in a school a school close to my house a secondary school closer to my house i didn't want to go i hated it but everybody that was so nice to me and yeah it was a very nice time but then there was a predator teacher oh gosh this one and i was like 16 then and he was about 30 and oh oh my god 
<laughs> it was just insane. So the first day that he came, it was in assembly. And then when he saw me, he was look, just looking at me. I was like, who are you? What is your name? I said, Angel. And then he was like, WTF. And I was like, well. And then everybody was laughing. He was like, do you know what WTF means? I was like, no. Because that time I, I literally knew nothing. He was like, what the fuck? And I was like, <laughs> And everybody was laughing. I was like, what the heck? Why would you, why are you saying that? And he was just looking at me like, hmm, like things like that. And then he came to my class and he came to sit on my table. And he was like, where are you from? Like, who are you? Things like that. Like, oh, he was so freaking lazy. And then he kept calling me his wife. Like teachers do that a lot. Call me his, their wife and the rest. And it's, it's not in a sleazy way, but he was literally so sleazy. <laughs> and that time, like, uniform was kind of short sleeved and i didn't really like that so i always wore a jacket and then one time he made me come in front of him and he was like remove your jacket and then my male friend was standing there and he was like no i guess he wanted me to remove it so that he would see my boobs like my boob size or something like when i think about it eh? hey. and then he asked me me and one girl who is prettier and i was like okay like this man was so freaking silly that he would be coming so close to me he would brush himself against me and the other teachers saw it but i guess they found it normal and apparently there was a rumor that he was dating he dated one of the old girls so i guess it was my turn now and i remember i was in one class a geography class and he was on the teacher's desk and i was listening to the teacher and he was standing sitting on the teacher's desk and he was just staring at me like staring and i was like oh my gosh i was so uncomfortable i don't know why the teachers did nothing like, I was so uncomfortable. And then he was like, like, mouthing while the teacher was teaching me. And you were on the teacher's desk staring at me and asking me questions, basically distracting me. And I was like, huh? He was like, how old are you with my mouth? His mouth. And I was like, oh, my God. And now that I'm older, because when you are 16, you are like, oh, I'm grown. But now that I'm older, ah! Oh, my God. This one was over 30. Oh, my gosh. So, afterwards right we did a test so to vacate we had to do the test and he was like what mark do i want i said 90. i was like okay i was like no 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 it's like no 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 it's fine so before that right he would cane everybody like cane but he never caned me because i never did anything wrong so i felt like he used that as an opportunity to cane me like if i come back to school and then I don't get a 90%. He will cane me. And then the cane, he wanted to do that because when you cane somebody, you get to hold a person. You hold a person's dress. Like, so you get to hold a person. Oh, God. Anyway, <clears throat> so we went on the vacation. And that was back in July. July or something. And my mom and my sister left in 31st May. The day they left, that was the day I cried so much. So they left. I was with my stepdad. It was, it was all fine and dandy. And then I went over to my mom's best friend. I went over to her place for a while and it was fun and that's when i really seek god i was like lord lord you see what is happening like this man is i don't want to go back to the school anymore i don't want to go back i don't want him to beat me i don't want i just don't want to go back anymore i just want to go abroad i, I please lord do something make a way like make whatever mommy's doing let it happen because she was like it might it, it can work in december and i was like i can't wait december because september we are resuming and that was but that was in like august god it was so intense and i kept counting the days to school on the calendar counting 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 and it was almost the end of august i kept praying i just didn't know what's going to happen and then all of a sudden just one day my auntie came to me she was like oh angel your dad says he wants to sign the paper so tomorrow you are going to the embassy i was like huh <laughs> like the, I, I didn't even think of that my whole mind was god let what my mom is doing with the papers let it work. All of a sudden, my dad was like, he wants to sign. What? I, like, I wrote it in my diary. 29th August 2014. On Wednesday, they told me that my dad had signed. I was so happy and I thank God like never before. Oh, thank God. Finally, this day has come. Whoever knew that me, Angel, will sit on a plane now again. Anyway, I woke up at 4. When I woke up, I said it's not 5 o'clock yet and I slept again. Bella is going to school today. Yeah, I remember. I saw on Facebook she had post, posted that she was going to school and I was I was not envious, I was happy for her. I was like, hmm, I mean she started her life, that is nice. And I was just liking her pictures, not knowing what is going to happen for me. 5 a.m. yet and I slept again. Bella is going to school today. 
because I guess I was waking up at five. I really wish her luck. So I got up and I got myself ready. And then my auntie called me and then she told me the good news. So yeah, we went to the embassy and then we did everything. It was just crazy to me. So afterwards, I didn't have to go back to the school, even though I came here in October. So they were like, oh, I can still go to the school for a bit. I was like, no, I don't want to go. It's a waste of money trying to say things like that. And then I came here and I was happy. And then I asked one of my friends that when I left, what did that man say? Because he didn't believe me that I was coming abroad. And he was like, oh, my wife has left me. Oh, oh my God. Like, so when I came, my relationship with God kind of deteriorated again. And I got more into K-pop and K-drama. And I almost died when I was, when I was, I think, 18. I almost drowned. Like, I almost drowned twice. And when I say drown, it's, it's crazy. Like, I thought I knew how to swim. I went to a water park. But then the water was just too deep. And I fell in. And I couldn't come out. Oh my gosh. And my friends were just shouting, shouting. Instead of helping me. It's just, it was just crazy. And that was my sister's prom day. So imagine your sister dying on your prom day. And that, the worst thing is that I feel like, when I was in that water slide, the whole, the song that was in my head was a K-pop song. <laughs> my relationship with God was that far apart. Like K-pop had become like my idol. And yeah, I felt like if I had died then, I wouldn't have got into heaven. And God rescued me. And the guy I was talking to at that time didn't really help. Because he didn't believe in my God. So I was conflicted about trying to change him. Girls, don't try it. Trying to change him with because I thought it's for his own good that oh he will come to know God and then God will save him. So I'm actually doing a good thing. So I'm trying to convert him. Oh, girls, don't do that. When, when you try to convert somebody that is not doesn't want to, and you're trying to make them change themselves, I'm going far away and far, further away from God. So when God says, "Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers," I just kept asking God if He's the right one and let Him change. But then I knew He's not because. God has told me in his word, do not be unequally yoked. So why was I grieving God? Asking him so many nonsense questions for what? When I know the answer already. I got baptized when I was 19. And then I started, I got the thongs back at 20. I don't know if if it makes sense to have a go and then come back. I don't know if it's a thing, but that's what happened with me. So I went to uni. So uni is where like you finally get to relax and the rest. But then when I went to uni, it was not in my mind that I'm going to be wayward or whatever. I was like, I'm going to stay grounded. And then the first day, I got approached by a church group. And that's when I learned about quiet time. I, I didn't know about quiet time then. So I started doing my quiet time with God, like spending time with God, meditating, reading the Bible, talking to him like a friend. And yeah, I went. I also went to the club a few times. <laughs> about four times. Yeah, I hated it. Or every, every single one, I hated it. Like, I, I was so bored. I was just standing, and I don't drink. So I guess maybe that's why. I was just standing there watching people. Like, like, eh, what the heck are you doing? Kind of thing. But then I don't know that I was there being all this holier than down. But then I'm the same as them. If something were to happen, if the club fire were to break out or whatever, I'm basically in the same predicament as them. And where will my soul be going? Like, I, I don't even know what the heck I was doing. How I thought I was doing. I was like, I want to see it and know that I don't like it. But then what if I ended up liking it? Then what? So COVID happened and I, during COVID is where so many people came to know about God. And that's when I felt like life was so meaningless. Like everything has been taken away from us. Education, entertainment, working, everything has been taken away from us. So what matters at this point? Only God mattered. And then that's when I felt like it's really the end times. So that's when I started watching so much Christian YouTube and I felt like life had no meaning. Before that, I was struggling with student finance. If you want to know the full story, because it's quite long, I'll put links about, about the testimony I did with my sister. I was struggling with student finance. It was hard. I kept applying for it. But then the first year, I got it as an EU migrant worker. The second year is where it was a problem. Because I was in my second year now. I kept applying. I kept praying. It was so, I was struggling so much with so much depression, body image. That, was, that time was so intense. And... Yeah, we came back home because of COVID. And that was kind of a blessing in disguise because of the student finance situation, because of the guy I was talking to at that point. Oh my God, that guy could have been, that guy could have been the doom of me. The way God kept pulling me away from that guy. <laughs> like so much circumstances. If when we are supposed to meet, when we are supposed to even talk, something would happen. Oh, God is good. Yeah, so when we came back home, we kept praying and I kept doing jobs I didn't like to pay off the amount of money that I was owing for my rent. Because I had to pay my house, right? Where I was living. But I couldn't pay yet because of student finance. And I kept working, trying to 
I pay a little by little. I apply for a scholarship. I got it. There were three people who got it. I was part of the three. I was so thankful. It was a thousand pounds. I put it towards my rent. My rent was about six thousand pounds. I put it towards my rent and I applied for some loans. Like the school gives some loans, like five hundred pounds, three hundred pounds, and I applied for it. It was not easy, like even applying. It was a whole long process, and then I got it. I was so thankful, and they gave it to me for free because it's of the pandemic. I was like, wow, thank you, Lord. So that was about seven hundred I could put towards my the rent, and then I'll be working, and then I'll be putting some towards the rent, helping my mom in the house. So, like by the time that I got back to school, I had finished paying everything. God is just, God is just. He's just so amazing. <laughs> it was just crazy. And the, um, the amount of money I paid, it, it was more from other people or other fans than me, my working one. When I got back to uni, I would finished paying everything. And I had still not gotten student finance. <laughs> so I had not gotten student finance for over a year at that point. So for my next house, I needed student finance. And then they brought court action that if I don't pay, I have to leave, things like that. I was praying. And that was still during lockdown, covid that was September 2020. And I was still praying, praying. I think that was not lockdown anymore. But there were some things that were shut. I don't remember. If, if it was, please put it down in the comments below. Every 8 o'clock, I would sit down and just speak in tongues. Talk to God about my day. Much didn't happen anyway. Talk to God about my day. And then just go about just praying, just meditating, reading my Bible, dimming my light. And then the tongues just start coming out. So I was doing every eight o'clock. That was like my time with God. And then every Saturday there was a Zoom meeting that they pray a lot. And I'll join and I'll be praying, praying, praying. And God removed so many people from my life at that time. Hey, it's just crazy. I was struggling a lot. Like when they brought a court action that I have to pay out or I would leave. That day I was crying so much. And then my my friend, she was there was whole, so many things for her. And then I was going through so much. And yeah. That's when I set boundaries between me and her. And then she had to go. And that's when I also cut ties with that guy that I was talking to. Because that guy was a whole red flag. I cut him off. I was like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And then I blocked him everywhere. Tell me why. Why? That same evening, I was crying because of the court action thing. That same evening. I don't think I even saw it that same evening. I think the next day and I saw it. I opened my email. I saw it at 10 p.m that my account has been updated i was like wait what because that was back in november so the year that i was struggling working 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 they would give me all of it together that was about eight thousand pounds god i was so happy but then i couldn't take it anymore and then i started weeping because it's like nah god has done it already and then all of a sudden they were like hey they need my employers first they said it's a postgraduate a postgraduate application and then they need my employers thing like something about my employer i was like what the heck is happening and all of a sudden they said no it's not my account it's somebody else's account and then it's satan just trying to bring confusion to make me scared but i was like nah god has done it already and they gave me my money that's when i really got close to god because when covid happened i was like nah god send me here i am send me there's a song here i am send me god and i was just singing it not because i wanted god to send me i kept singing that song when the student finance thing happened i was like nah i want to do something for god and the thing is that even after I got the blessings, right, I got the 8,000 pounds and the rest, I had money. I was so quite depressed. I don't know why. I felt like, okay, I've had it now. Now what? So I started researching. I was like, let me research evangelism because I follow um, Pastor. I'll put his name on the screen. I forgot. So I followed him a lot. I was like, oh, I wish they did it in the UK too. And then I emailed them. I was like, oh, I live in Nottingham. When will you guys come here? They're like, oh, they don't come here and the rest. I was like, oh, God, you see me, I tried. So we don't say that I didn't try. At least I tried. And they said, oh, actually, they have somebody who also does evangelism in Nottingham. So they will connect me to them. I was like, oh, my God. God really wants to send me. What? I was just I was just saying. I was just saying. But I was like, okay, fine. Let me just go ahead with it. I was like, maybe if I go there, it will not be that deep or whatever. I went there. <laughs> I went there the first day. Oh, my gosh. The glory of God just came upon me. Like, I've never felt the presence of God like that day. Yeah, the first day I went for evangelism and I spoke my testimony. That's what my leader said I should do. I should just say my testimony. It was just, it's what, like I was shaking. Like somebody came, like there was a man that came in front of me and he was like, hey, I should stop, I should stop. And I was just looking at him in the eye and I was speaking in tongues like that. And then he left. Like, oh my gosh, I was scared of nothing. And because I was there, 
like the young people came around especially the young boys <laughs> no sharing leaflets and then they kept taking it and then even another girl came to join because she saw me and it's just like oh she was inspired because she saw a young person i was like wow i'm even inspiring other people like you never know like how much your light is shining upon other people guys so just do even the little things the things that you think oh it's not that deep you don't know how much is inspiring somebody else so yeah so that's how i became an evangelist with them so from time to time i, I kept going and the rest even when it was raining there was one time it was raining i was like oh i don't want to go but i was like when people see me in the rain they'll be like huh why why is it so important that she's in the rain people came around they were like oh well done and the rest and before that right i did not go straight into evangelism before that, i had preached in the church when i was about 19 after i finished preaching i was like oh i've done something big so um, it's my time i don't have to be close to god anymore so after i preached the next day i was not even praying or reading my bible anymore I was just doing whatever i wanted to do it was just crazy so guys be careful like when you when you do something for god right the devil will try so much to pull you away so that's when you become so vulnerable so you have to be very 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 careful the devil really tried it and i was my i was so down my spirit was not with god at all so after i finished i still kept keeping on with my routine when i come back home i'll be thanking god because the spirits that are out there eh? like we went to lead somebody through a be at my my leader it was it's just crazy especially muslims oh my goodness they'll be fighting with you so you have to be careful like the demonic spirit the demonic attacks oh my gosh i felt like one day um sleep paralysis like there was the, it was that day that i was supposed to go for evangelism i felt so many choking 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 i just guys and then i woke up i started praying 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 and i went like you really need god after that because the devil will try to use distraction use frustration use whatever use attacks so that time it was attacks for me so yeah even after that i was like um i still even when god has done something good for me i still want to be close to god still and then third year student finance was so smooth and easy for me and i was like nah i'm still going to keep up with my routine and it was a lot harder because it's like i don't really need god so it was a lot harder so i kept being up and down up and down up and down and then i started i got into a youth group and i was the woman said her full-time job was to teach people about God. I was like, wow, I want a job like that where I can teach people about God. That's so cool. And I, I started listening to a woman on YouTube saying we should start doing YouTube and the rest. And then I started YouTube. I was making reaction videos just for their back. You get it? But then later I was like, huh, this makes no sense. I'm just wasting people's time when they should be doing what actually matters, learning about God and making sure they are saved. Why am I being part of the entertainment factor and wasting their time? So I was like, now nah, I'm going to do it for God. Make it entertaining, but then people will be able to relate to whatever they want to see. But then there's God. They will find God in the videos. So yeah, that's what I started to make my channel about. And it's been tough. It's been so hard, especially after uni, not knowing what to do in my life. And ups and downs. Like I've been so up and down this year with God. It's crazy. Frustrated, discouraged, angry. Like the relationship with God, right? It's a journey. It's not just straight. It's up and down, up and down. So don't feel disheartened. But make sure that God is your lifeline. Do not let go of your lifeline. When you are drowning, I read in my morning devotion that do not you when you're drowning, you need the lifeline the most. You might feel tired, but hold on to the lifeline, which is God. You might feel discouraged, you might feel angry. I keep feeling angry. I kept crying. I was like, God, you don't see my tears. Like what am I doing with my life? It's been a year. I still don't know what exactly is happening with my life. Why am I getting rejections? Why, why are things not working for me? But God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. And I pray it's not just empty words very soon. I pray I'm able to understand what God actually wants me to do very soon. Yeah. And I pray the same for you too. God is your comfort. You can't do without him. I can't do without him. If you want to know more about how to find a relationship with God, I'll put it on the screen. And if you want to know more about True Love, I have a free ebook just for you. So all you have to do is just sign up to the newsletter and become an officially a royal babe. And you get your free ebook. Link is in the bio. Coming up in one, two. Make sure to like. For God so loved you that he gave his only son. So you and I will believe in him and not perish. But have everlasting life.